I'm Madhu Sharma and this is Design Mind. Every episode, we teach your mind about design by analysing a website. In this episode of Design Mind, we are looking at Martina Spell, which sells designer chairs. The website is in German and we will be using Google to translate, so there might be some oddities. For online stores, a really good design technique is to let the products sell themselves. This is something Martina Spell demonstrates brilliantly. The homepage displays this dramatically large image of a chair together with the company's logo. If you're wondering, polystyrene is German for upholstery. With this big logo and large image, there'll certainly be no ambiguity about what this site has to offer. The front page doesn't seem to have any links other than this secondary logo, which is perhaps a bit too subtle as a link, as it's not really clear that it needs to be clicked on to view the rest of the site. Clicking the logo takes us to another giant image, this time of this person, who is probably Martina Spell with a chair. It would have perhaps been better if they'd used a caption to confirm that the person is Martina. Regardless, this image is a brilliant way of communicating that this company is very hands-on with the creation of its chairs and that it pays attention to detail. As you'll have noticed, this navigation bar also scrolled in when the image first appeared. Like most things on the site, the navigation is wonderfully simple. Its long length makes it easy to identify, but the minimalist design allows it to act as a frame to the main image, so it integrates seamlessly with the photos. Historically, websites have placed their sidebars over here on the left. However, by doing the opposite, the user's gaze is encouraged to move over the photos before stopping here at the navigation, which again allows the products to remain at the forefront of attention. Scroll down and we get this photo grid. Much like the image earlier, this is an excellent way of communicating values of care and attention to detail. However, because the page becomes so long, there's a chance that users might lose interest. It probably would have been better to put these images in a slideshow. The page actually does have this slideshow-like video. It might have been better if the video had been used by itself. As you might have noticed earlier, right at the bottom of the page is this mission statement, which explains Martina's values. It's a great way of anchoring the meaning of the images that came before it, but it does feel a bit detached from them. A better approach would have been just to use the video, but then shorten the text of the mission statement and place it on top of it as a caption. That would have allowed the images to convey all the messages without creating too much scrolling, and the caption would have allowed the meaning of the images be clearly understood. Let's move on by analysing the shop section. The shop section is beautiful. It simply contains the products on a neutral background, allowing them to sell themselves. The audience's attention is directed wholly onto the chairs. There aren't even any prices or titles to distract from the images. As you will note, the highlights on the chairs have been enhanced and a shadow has been placed underneath. This creates a strong 3D look, which makes them appear more real and physical. As discussed in previous Design Mind episodes, making products look physical causes audiences to form a stronger connection with them. And here, thanks to the bold clutter-free design, the effect is particularly strong. Obviously, not having title and pricing information is a bit confusing. But thankfully, the site displays this when the user hovers over a chair. Although, Having the product disappear to show the information is a bit disorientating. It would have been better if the product had faded and the text was overlaid on top. Clicking on one of the products takes the user to the product overview page. Again, this works fantastically well because it's simple. Here on the left we have a large photo of the product and, as you can see, by hovering over it, the user can view it from different angles. On the right is the key information about the product, which uses varied font sizes and weights to organise the text into an easy-to-glance hierarchy. The site doesn't actually allow for online ordering, but by clicking on this button, the user can send an email. The button merely triggers the user's email client, which I think is a bad idea these days, as a growing number of people use webmail services, which won't work with the button. It would have been better if the link took the user to a form where they could send out a request for information. 
While on the subject of weak aspects on the page, I don't understand why the Martina Spur logo is at the top. It just takes up space and it seems unnecessary as the navigation sidebar already has a logo over here. Scroll down the page and the user can see a gallery of ultra close up photos. Again, this is a brilliant way of allowing the user to get a sense of the product. The industrial background used might seem like an odd setting for a furniture product, especially as most companies show off their items in luxury aspirational rooms. However, here it works quite well as it again helps to push users' attention onto the actual chairs and prevents them from being distracted by the background. Much like the gallery on the front page, this would have probably worked better as a slideshow, as the scrolling can become a bit tiresome. Let's move on to analysing the lookbook section. This shows off a selection of chairs in everyday settings. Again, the scenes tend to be quite drab, but do create a unique style for the brand, especially with the unusual props, such as this old telephone and this typewriter. Hovering over the photos turns the mouse into a crosshair, and by clicking on the chairs, this information box appears. The layout is attractive and magazine-like, but I think the information is a little bit too sparse. Pricing information could have easily been included without distracting from the photo. The main problem with the lookbook page is that there are only three items. These arrows are used to flip between the items, but being in black they are quite difficult to see. The third item doesn't even display any product information when clicked on, so the section feels unfinished, and there's nothing else in the section other than those three items. Let's examine the site on mobile. On mobile, the site simply collapses down into one column, and so is fairly easy to browse. Although the nice big images used on mobile are beautiful, they do make the page quite long, which involves lots of scrolling. As you will note, the navigation switches to a horizontal bar, which works quite well on a tablet. However, on a mobile screen, these links can be a little bit fiddly to touch, but I think the site offers just enough space to get away with it. Unfortunately, the navigation bar doesn't offer a link to the home page, so it can be a bit disorientating if you want to go back there. We will now conclude this analysis by discussing some minor issues with the site. The navigation bar here on the left is quite poorly organised. The shop link is the most important, yet it is listed third. This is a bit bizarre, especially as the lookbook link that comes before it doesn't offer anything of value. The about link at the top is a little bit confusing as it just links back to the home page instead of displaying an about us type page. I'm also not keen on the CSS winner award. Although it helps to demonstrate that this is a high quality site, I don't think the average user will know what it means. It ends up being a little bit distracting, especially as it's placed on every page. In addition, the site uses a different logo to represent each of the awards it has won. I think a lot of audiences will get confused by this, as they'll wonder why the logo keeps on changing, and won't realise that they relate to different awards. It would have been better if they just had a separate page, which listed all the awards they had won. Overall, the Martina Spell site is brilliant. It demonstrates the power of simplicity and how letting the product sell themselves can captivate the attention of audiences. That's it for this episode of Design Mind. A new episode of Design Mind is released every Monday and Thursday. Find us on the web at designmind.info. Our YouTube channel is at youtube.com slash designmindinfo. You can also find us on iTunes. We'd love it if you could leave us a review at any of these places. Until next time, happy designing!